Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to our next video that we're doing on the channel. Now we've got seven flights on the Aviation Design Diamond and it's time for some upgrades. So let's roll that intro and we will talk about this. guys so Sal from Sky Candy Landing Lights he watched the Maiden video and we had a discussion afterwards and he just didn't feel like the diamond was showing its true potential so we've got something in this little box here and basically what's uh, what's in here is gonna make this diamond even better so we do have to make a bunch of changes to the system but that's one of the benefits of Sky Candy Landing Lights is is Sal knows everything about my light setup that's in the Diamond aircraft. So when we talked about the changes, he knew exactly what he needed to do and everything is plug and play, showed up in this package. So if you guys are looking for a, a wicked light setup for whatever plane you're, you're trying to build, whether it's just a set of landing lights or something crazy like what the Diamond's gonna get, uh, make sure you contact Sky Candy guys, talk, reach out to Sal and uh, see what he can do for you because I mean you if you've watched my videos you've seen the videos of that thing it's insane this is going to be next level all right guys so we'll take a quick look at what's in the box here and uh, I'll show you exactly what we're doing on the diamond so we've got a few things in here we've got a wiring harness we've got a castle creations uh, 2.0 BEC now this is all wired up and ready to go because again it's all plug and play uh, we've got some Sky Candy stickers, thank you, Sal. And we've got what's in that box. Okay, so you can see it there. That's what's in the box. So what these are is they're actually full scale marker lights. If you haven't seen the article in the Jet magazine, um, Jet International, I think it was two issues ago, so it was just near the end of 2020. Um, check it out. They've got the write-up on the, the the aviation design diamond that Sky Candy did and it shows the whole diagram with these lights installed basically we have a Very similar if not the exact match on my diamond now to what's in that article. So these things are Insane how bright they are Okay, so the only kicker and the only reason that we need this um, BEC voltage regulator is these are operating off of 14 volts. So what we need to do is we were running the light setup off of a three cell LiPo, and now we're gonna be running it off of a four cell LiPo. So just to power these things, and this regulator is for my belly beacon, which is gonna drop that down to 12 volts which is what the belly beacon's designed to run off of. So that's the whole reason for this. It's all labeled, all marked and ready to go. And uh, thank you Sal for doing that, I appreciate it. So we do have a little bit of uh, manipulation and wiring to figure out because um, the way everything's plumbed right now or, or wired right now, it's not just simply plug and play from the battery end. But it's gonna be a fairly simple solution. So right now on the diamond, the way we've got things running is we've got our two LiPo receiver batteries. We've got our light and gear battery. So this is running the light setup and also the Biotech landing gear. Okay, so that's a three cell LiPo. We've got our three cell LiPo turbine battery, which is a big one. I think it's like over 5,000 milliamps. Um, and then we've got a little tiny two cell LiPo running the smoke pump. So. That's basically the way we have got things set up right now. And my thinking is I'm going to take the turbine battery and run the turbine and also the gear off of the turbine battery. Now, the only kicker with that is this is the light and gear line that comes to the back and it actually splits back here instead of up front. So that's the only thing that we're gonna have to basically figure out is uh, running the line 
from the turbine battery to the landing gears. So that's the one mystery we need to figure out. Now we do have the ECU or data relay module is kind of in this area. The nose is there. So we may be able to split it off right here, which is probably gonna be the best and easiest way to do it. Um, so that's what I'm thinking. And then we'll just run the line back here to the, uh, the area where we need to go, so. All right, guys, it is giveaway time. We've got a set of Sky Candy landing lights to give away. We have done this before. I'm gonna give away a set of the landing lights, the, the, the light colored ones. You can pick either the one inch or the seven eighth inch ones and a digital switch. All you have to do to enter, you gotta do a couple things. You gotta put a comment below. The winner is going to be chosen from the comments below. And you also gotta give the video a thumbs up. So make sure you do that right now as you're watching this video. And one week from the time that this video comes out, we will do the draw on Facebook. So make sure you guys check out the lighter side of RC, the, the Facebook page on there. I will post a quick little video on the Facebook page. So make sure you're, you're following the Facebook page. Again, link down below. And that's where we're gonna announce the winner of this video. So to enter, watch the video, but uh, throw a comment down below. Doesn't matter what the comment is. The winner is gonna be chosen from the comments. Give this video a thumbs up. And one week from when this video comes out, we will announce the winner on Facebook. Thanks guys. So keep in mind guys that this doesn't, the camera does not capture these things uh, properly, but I've already got the uh, spots in my eyes. But, uh, so this is what it's gonna look like. So you basically have your, your red marker light, which the way the reflector works, it's actually visible from all different angles. <laughs> You've got your uh, white light visible from the back and then you've got your strobes, and there's actually two. So there's one visible this way, and then these ones here, which are visible in all directions. And there's our green one. <laughs> Crazy. All right, so where these are actually gonna sit is we're gonna use the existing uh, hole that I used for these other marker lights and they're gonna basically sit in just like that. And uh, so step number one, we've gotta get these marker lights out. Now, fortunately, when I wired this up, it's all very simple, right? The, uh, the servo wire that's in there right now, that's just gonna unplug. This one's gonna plug in and it's gonna be quite simple. So to do this though, we're gonna undo the bolts and pull off the tip tank and that's gonna make working on this stuff a bit easier. So let's pull that tip tank off and we'll go from there. All right, so again, it was quite easy to remove. I just grabbed the existing light with my pliers and twisted it out. Now, when I did these holes, I did them tight enough so I could actually use the threads, but I just used shoe goop to put those in and they worked out really well. Now, the only downside is when I glued all these lights in, I got epoxy on, or CA or something on the, uh, on the connector here. And so when I was untwisting the light, it actually snapped off the little, uh, little connections. So we won't be able to reuse those for anything, but this is the connector that we will put the new light onto. All right, guys, so I'm just playing around with this to make sure that the existing position will work out well. So this is where it goes if I use the existing wire. So I'm just gonna, uh, I've run the wire through, just gonna hook it up to the battery and see how it looks or how it would look on the plane. So our front light obviously is right there. And I think that looks really good because we've got this marker facing forward. We've got our side markers going in all directions. So totally visible. Man, those are bright. Holy. So I think using the existing hole is gonna work out just fine. Now, the other benefit to using the existing hole is 
on the other side of the carbon rod, there's a piece of wood in there. And that should allow us to screw the back end here with a wood screw. And then what we'll do is we're going to drill a hole right here on the front one. I don't think we'll be close enough to the wood, but I'm just going to fill this area with high saw, let it cure, and then we'll be able to drill and tap into that with another wood screw. And that'll make mounting this quite simple. I think when I do mount this, I am going to use the rubber pads that come with it as well, just to help take up the, uh, the angle of the tip tank. And I think that's going to work out awesome. Okay guys, so I've done a little bit of exploratory drilling here and you may be able to see it, but we've got lots of buildup of adhesive because the carbon rod is right here. So basically this is the glue that is holding the carbon rod in. So there's a big glob of it here. So we actually hit that nicely. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use one of these uh, threaded inserts, the brass threaded inserts. And so we thread these in and you use adhesive and then now you've got a whatever size imperial thread that is and that will hold the light in. So that's how we're going to do the back one. Now on the front one we've got good access because of the hole that's here. So what we can do is we can basically build up a bunch of adhesive there or we could put a blind nut in and uh, glue that down. So there's quite a few options on what we can do to the front. I like the blind nut idea, I think. Um, I think that'll probably work out okay. So I'm just gonna uh, work on uh, this a little bit further and I'll let you guys know what I decide to do on the front. Okay guys, so I mixed up a little bit of high saw, just put some inside the hole and then threaded those that metal um, brass thing in there and that worked out good. So. I think I'm going to do that for the back one. I'm not a huge fan of blind nuts. The reason for that is they tend to strip out if you don't get them absolutely perfect, especially the smaller ones. So I think what I'm going to do is put a thin piece of wood in here and just build up a bunch of high saw in this area. So I'm just going to cut a thin piece of wood that I can slip in there and then we'll have some nice backing and, and epoxy and high saw and everything to screw into. And then we'll just use a wood screw on this one and uh, that'll make it nice and easy and we'll have some alignment freedom on this front one. The back one obviously we're fixed and then we can drill the hole and stuff wherever we need to on the front. So I'm gonna cut that little strip of wood. We'll uh, basically shove the rest of this high saw in there and uh, let it cure overnight. All right guys, well, it's been quite a while. It's evening now the next day. And uh, this morning I got the other wing tank taken off and I reinforced the same section as the first one. And I was doing a bit of research today on these lights and I found out that um, these are them. So the operation voltage is from nine to I think 18 volts. Um, obviously 14 would be good. I've just tried them out and I just plugged them into a four cell LiPo and a three cell LiPo that's on the plane. And I think I'm just gonna keep them at three cell LiPo. Um, for now anyways, we'll see how, how it works out. The, the reason for that is I don't wanna have to mess with my batteries, right? So we may change it depending on how bright they are. I think I, I honestly couldn't see a difference. So maybe it'll work out perfect at uh, a three cell LiPo. That would keep things nice and simple. So that's how I'm gonna proceed with this, which is nice because it makes things more simple and we don't have to run new battery wires and things like that. So anyways, guys, I am next step is we are going to get the actual light pods mounted on the wing tips themselves. All right, now we've got a bit of a difference here. So if you look at where this one lined up in relation to the carbon rod. We were drilling just in front of the carbon rod on the, uh, this is the left wing tip, okay? And then when I did my hole on my right wing tip originally, I put it just a little bit further back compared to the right one 
but I think it's still gonna work out because it looks like we're gonna be just behind the carbon rod. So we'll never notice the difference while it's on the plane. And I think it's gonna work out good because again, we've got our, our glob of stuff there holding the carbon rod. So I just wanted to point that out to you guys. We are not perfectly even. Um, the alternative is I could elongate this hole a little bit. Um, I don't really wanna do that though. So I'm just going to keep things the way they are. All right guys, pretty simple install. The right wing or the green strobe is all installed. So we've got just a little bit of a gap kind of in the halfway point, just because of the shape of the tank obviously, but totally unnoticeable when it's installed. So man, those are, uh, <laughs> those are gonna be bright. So now I just plug this in to here. I can get rid of my little extension, put some shrink tubing on there and we can reinstall the right tip tank. All right guys, left light is all installed, went in beautifully. Let's get this connected back on to the wing. There we go guys, so the lights are installed. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to assemble my plane and we're gonna check these things out. Now the other reason I want to assemble my plane is I want to get the C of G set perfectly and I need to have the plane assembled in order to do that. So um, let's put this thing together and I'll show you what these lights look like. All right guys, well I know you've seen them before, but uh, here they are, oh my gosh. <laughs> now the camera definitely isn't going to pick those up, but those are absolutely mental. There's a shot of the other side there. So the green is very, or the, the color is very visible from basically um, more than 90 degrees. So it's very, very impressive. So you basically have the color visible from the forward line all the way back past 90. So it's about uh, probably 100 degrees of visibility of the color. And then you've got the flasher, which is, uh, oh, it's crazy. Man, those are cool. So thank you, Sky Candy. Thank you, Sal, for hooking me up with these lights. Uh, the diamond is definitely next level now. That is absolutely crazy. <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. So if you guys, again, if you're looking for any lighting needs, check out Sky Candy, reach out to Sal, get in touch with him, and he will definitely hook you up. These things are amazing. The diamond officially shines like a diamond now. We've got the light kit absolutely dialed in. Totally happy, love it, I think it's amazing. Really looking forward to the next flights on this thing. <laughs> All right guys, just when you thought you were done with the Aviation Design Diamond upgrades, um, we are not done. So what happened was I was talking with Sal from Sky Candy Landing Lights and I was telling him about, about the install and everything. Now, the 12 volts, the three cell LiPo would work. The problem is that the beacon on the bottom and the new addition to the wings would not stay synchronized at lower voltages. So ultimately, I wanna make sure that it's the best that it can be. So we've got a couple solutions here. Um, probably the easiest solution is to put a Castle Creations BEC in between the power lead and the gear. So the, uh, the Bayotech gear controller that's uh, right down there. That's gonna be the easiest solution as long as the BEC doesn't pull current from the battery. So the way this is set up is I've got my batteries here. So this would be the battery. This would be the battery that I would install because I have it. I've got a smaller one, but uh, these lights pull a massive amount of power because there's so many of them. But uh, I've got a 38 milli, 3800 milliamp four cell LiPo. Now what I've done is I took the weight off of the nose, that last weight, which is 
119 grams. So with the jetty battery we had and the weight, it almost equals this battery. So with this battery, I think we're 20 grams heavier is what it worked out to be. So it's almost a perfect combination because then we still have a massive battery to power the lights and the gear. Now, the only kicker is, does that BEC pull power while it's off? Because the way this is designed is we've got the connection here for the battery, the lead comes back, and then it comes to a splitting point down in the fuselage. And then what I've got is I've got a cable that comes up for the light switch. And if you've watched the diamond build video, I covered this. So this is the switch to turn the power to the lights on and off. And then I've got another lead coming off that battery that goes right into the Bayotech gear controller. But that is not controlled by the switch. So I can fly with the lights unpowered and still have the gear to the battery. Hopefully that makes sense. So my concern is I turn my plane off and we've still got the power going to the gear and hopefully, fingers crossed, it doesn't pull power when there's no, there's nothing using the power on the other end of the BEC. So that that's my hope. So what I've done to test that is I just charged the, the battery we were using before to power all this stuff. And I've got the BEC that I was going to install or that needs to be installed between the beacon, the belly beacon. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this into the battery right here. So I'm gonna plug this into the battery and ah uh, yes, it is powered. Cause you can see the little red LED. Dang. So that is the only downside with that solution. So that's why we test the things we test. That's why we go through these processes. Now I could leave it like this. The problem is that this is pulling current from the battery. So let's say in the morning I go flying, everything's charged, I'm at an event and I leave this battery plugged in. By the evening it may have pulled a couple hundred milliamps of power out of the battery, maybe more, maybe less, I don't know. But uh, that is not good. All right guys, so I think the best solution is we are going to use the turbine battery to power the landing gear. So, all right guys, we are changing things up again. Uh, not a good idea to Y lead the ECU battery. So, We've got another solution. <laughs> so we're going to put the turbine battery back the way it belongs, feeding just the turbine. And the other option we have is my smoke pump. So the Bayotech landing gear will run off of a 7.4 volt battery. Um, so I've got a lead coming back right here for my smoke pump and it goes right in this area. The gear is right on the other side. So that's definitely the easiest solution. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy working through my problems with me, but uh, that's what we're gonna do. So we're just going to uh, going to run a lead right over to the, uh, the other side for the, the smoke pump. So it'll be super easy and uh, should work good. So that's the ultimate solution. I'm gonna make up the wiring harness that will power the gear from the smoke pump side and we will be good. Good morning, Luna. Good morning, McFlufferson. Oh, belly rubs for Luna. Oh, muffin. Okay guys, everything is back to the way it was supposed to be. So we've got the line coming to the gear controller right there. We've got it wide into the smoke pump. Yes, don't mind my electrical tape covering the solder joints. Um, I did that because my lines were too short to use shrink tubing. So anyways, that stuff is all done. I'm gonna put my battery pack together and that's gonna be um, all this, basically the same batteries I was using before. 
So anyways, guys, now we are officially complete.